Guys, our 10 times bonus entry week is here. So if you want to grab those 10 times bonus entries right now to enter to win this truck plus $5,000 in cash, all you got to do is go to lnpgear.com, place an order, and as soon as you check out, you're automatically entered to win. 10 times bonus entries will not last very long though, so if you want to grab them, grab them while you can. Or forever hold your peace, and best of luck to you. Somebody's got to take this thing home. Somebody could be you. We just moved into the area. He told me to give you a call if I needed some concrete work done because you did a good job for him. Okay, vlog two at the new place here. Vlog two, officially living here. We're gonna be doing a few things today around the property type stuff again. You know, we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff around the property until we get kind of situated and we get the shop done. As you guys just saw, I was um, calling to get some concrete work done. We need to get concrete work done in the shop and then we can finish out the walls and interior and. Uh, replace what needs to be replaced and then get that all buttoned up and get that all buttoned up in here um, That way it is done. I got to mow again I'm not gonna film that because I already got a vlog of bush on yesterday So I got to mow some more stuff and then after that we're gonna set up some trail cameras And I'm gonna show you a little bit of the property because you guys said a property tour would be super cool So we're gonna do a property tour get a little bit of weed whacking done and then we'll get back there and continue on with the video fast forward five hours and I did get the yard mowed off Again, so I had mentioned in a few videos back doing a property tour if you guys wanted to see it So I thought hey what the heck let's let's see what people say and a lot of you guys commented And you did say you would love to see a tour of the property I have not seen all of it But I can give you the gist of what there is and show you around what I can and you guys can let me know what you think So of course up front there that is a house and in the front of the house We've got about two and a half acres of just wide open yard That is what is taking up a lot of my time with the mowing and then we have probably another acre and a half ish or two behind the house that goes from the one property line all the way over to the next and all the way back here to the what will soon be the new shop space that I also have to mow. There's that and then I do about another acre back through there which I'll get to in a bit. So the front yard is just pretty much wide open and flat and then you got over here you got these monstrous pine trees. I mean these things are huge. I mean, I don't think the camera's doing it much justice, but these dudes are huge. One of the big things that we loved about the backyard view was the pines, and these aren't even the only ones. If you come around back over here, you can also see these from the backyard too, which stretch across, but there's three more right over there. They're all in a row. Um, and then of course, we've got just a bunch of open ground that is currently just not used for anything. I mean, it is just like wide open, overgrown field. See, there's a rabbit hopping around right over there, taking off running. There it goes. But anyways, there's just a bunch of overgrown field over in here. And I'm a little bit torn on what to do with it because I personally am just a big time, a deer hunter and wildlife person like I love hunting and deer management and food plots and all that stuff so I'm trying to decide what I do with this because I also want to be able to shoot deer from the backyard of the house here out the back door or from the shop which the previous owner did actually last season through this opening you'd have a wide open shot from the house right back here to this big open spot here. So I'm trying to decide what I want to do with that because I have a feeling we could turn this into a really nice food plot. And in the late season, I would not doubt you have deer come all the way out of the woods back there and make their way up here to feed, especially if we leave all that overgrown over there where you've got all that tannish dead overgrown brush from last year um, that hasn't greened back up quite yet. Um, I just, I definitely see that being a possibility. And we might actually bring back some of the Brotherhood Outdoors content and do a lot of filming of some of the property work and like the food plot stuff, like the deer management specific stuff. We're still gonna do most of the vlogging here, but in terms of like stuff that's like specifically for deer management and hunting and filming hunts this fall, that's all gonna be over on the Brotherhood Outdoors link which is gonna be in the description below like always. Technically, we could expand the shop straight back if we wanted. Out front, it does go downhill at a grade, but out the back, it does actually stay level for a pretty good stretch there. And we could always bring the shop out back. But what I'm thinking about, at least for now, is adding a pad that goes beyond the shop and maybe extending another 
25 ish feet straight out the back and having a 25 or 20 by 30 pad out the back that way you know if we want to have another place to either park a truck trailers or whatever and have it out of sight behind the shop we can do that without it eventually running everything up and making a mess we do have to also put in a drive back to the barn because there was one originally and you can find the gravel when you're mowing over there but it hasn't been maintained obviously in years because there's no visible rock just looking at it so that would have to get redone and brought back here so the property is very long narrow piece it is probably only I want to say 150 -ish yards wide and then it's just a very deep parcel so it goes from the road and then it's about the exact same width 150 yards straight all the way back it's a big rectangle essentially and I like that because the way that the property is set up it gives you an advantage being deeper like that versus wide because if it was just width it would be a bunch of ag land and that's it and a bunch of field but because it goes so deep it does actually get back into a lot of the timber that's in this area which is one of the biggest reasons I actually like this location not just the home the home's beautiful it's a beautiful home the potential for the shop or expanding the shop but also the ability to hunt in my backyard I love that idea and I have always wanted to be able to do that. And this gives me the opportunity to do that in my backyard. We had properties before we sold them because we were making this move and they were gonna be like three, three and a half hours away. And I'm like, we're realistically not gonna use them that much being that far. And the fact that we'll be able to hunt in our backyard will be so much more convenient and we'll get way more use out of it. So I'd rather just take the cash from the properties and do something else with it. And in the meantime, enjoy the hunting ground in our backyard. So coming back here, I am on the far property line. The property line goes right here to this open field. So you've got these trees here and then it goes all the way to that far fence row over there. And then the neighbor's got a bunch of animals and stuff, but it's just a bunch of overgrown field all the way back through here. And then you've just got, you know, random trees all throughout some runoff from the field next door small oaks growing in here and there you know there's several small oaks there's another pie in there there's another pie in there previous owner had several trails throughout here that were previously maintained i'm maintaining this one going through here and there does a big circle. Probably not gonna maintain the one going straight through here just because I really don't want to. Unless, of course, I decide I wanna put a food plot in here, then I might go ahead and do it. But I do like the small looking branch coming off of this pine tree right here. Again, just a lot of overgrown areas, a lot of briars, an overgrown field. And I am essentially gonna leave most of this the way that you see it for wildlife specifically more than anything else and i am only going to be adding a few things one or two of those will be food plots a couple of tree stands so on and so forth and maybe 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 that big open area between those couple sets of pines behind the house maybe i can get some beans planted in there but i'm gonna have to get on that immediately because that's supposed to be planted right about now and if i don't get that planted right now then it'll be it'll end up being too late but that would be a really good idea for that location since it is up closer to the house and i would only want that to be used dominantly in the firearm or late season muzzleloader season when we can actually use a firearm from the house or close to the house depending on what the laws and regulations are because they'll get the most benefit from those beans in the late season and we will get the most benefit from the deer using them in the late season when there's nothing else to eat and then this is back where the overgrown field actually meets the timber and i was actually just back there mowing and i did bump a few deer down by an old blind that i took down because it was just kind of in a weird location back here just a lot of overgrown stuff this actually would probably make a really nice pond honestly it's already pretty much a big bowl and we're up on a big bank on this side it would just need pushed out to dam it up but other than that it'd be just about good to go the way that it is coming on over here i'm going to show you another thing that i actually already have plans of that i had just mentioned so i had mentioned a few minutes ago i'm planning on putting a food plot or two back here this is going to be one of the main ones that we actually hunt and it's going to be it's going to be good because the way that it's set up plenty of food but it's also very broken up with brush and cover and trees throughout so it's probably going to be an 
excellent food plot to actually hunt in the deer will actually probably feed on it. It's a little bit bigger than like a small kill plot, but it's not so big that like it's gonna be like the main feeding destination most of the time. Just kind of depends on how many deer we have back in here, but it's gonna be plenty of food for at least a small deer herd through most of the later part of the season. But let me show it to you guys right here. So here is what's going to be one of our main plots that we're gonna hunt. And we're actually gonna be able to hunt it with archery from that tree right there behind this big one with all the branches. There's a nice straight tree right there. It's gonna be a perfect archery setup to hide behind this other big tree and just drop a couple limbs to get some arrows down through. But that would give you about a 38 yard shot to here and about a 45 yard shot to the farthest corner and then everything else within the plot will just be closer and you know more adequate for archery hunting lots of cover little trees little bushes and stuff all throughout but this is all going to be everything that's mowed is all going to be planted in probably a purple top turnip mix and the reason i want to do that is because the deer don't need a bunch of green for the summer months or for the early fall because there's food everywhere. The neighbor's gonna have beans and corn and everything of that sort. I mean, there's gonna be plenty of crops around. Let them eat the neighbor's food when we don't really need to hold the deer. But when it comes to the season and the part of the year when the deer, A, they need the food, and B, you're gonna benefit from hunting over the food, is gonna be more like late October through January and then pretty much whatever's left should last them through the, the rest of that late season. And hopefully this is enough food to feed the deer, not just during the season, but after as well to keep them healthy and make it through. And here's another view of that nice straight tree. And it would sit right behind these three big, well, three or four big um, shoots coming out of this one base. And it would make it a very nice place to blend in and not get uh, skyline and spotted very easily with a little bit of motion and then you would have a nice view of this whole plot very well broken up deer would feel very safe in this because of all the shrubs and trees throughout the main feeding main big plot area is going to be here but then it's going to be planted all throughout here all the way down into that far corner which is about 45 yards and here's the back of it again there's that same tree so you have a reference point all this that's mowed is gonna be put into a plot. And then here's the plot right here, the back of it. And then there's a trail that goes right down into the woods here. And for the most part, I'm probably not gonna hunt the woods that much. I'm gonna probably set up a good one or two like good rut traveling locations, like good spots where you're gonna catch a buck cruising when you're trying to catch a deer that you know, this is not his core area. He's coming looking for something. So he's just passing through trying to pick up scent. I'm probably gonna have a couple spots like that for different winds back in here. But for the most part, we're dominantly probably gonna be hunting the edges of this and trying to pull the deer out and trying to leave most of this as like sanctuary area. So the deer have a lot of bedding cover that's undisturbed. So if you come back into the property, it is just all brushy. I mean, it is just all briars, trees that have these branches that come like all the way down to the ground they make really nice canopied areas all through here comment below what type of tree those are by the way i'm really really not familiar with those i don't see them very often ever and this place is loaded with these giant trees that the branches grow all the way to the ground and then this is where i took down that blind that was just kind of i mean could have been a good location depending on what you're trying to kill. If you're just trying to shoot, you know, a doe here and there, it'd probably be fine, but it's just kind of right in the middle of this area, which is a travel area, because I walked the property line and there's trails that flow right through this location. And you want to be close to travel corridors, but you almost want to set your blinds and stuff up kind of tucked into areas that deer aren't walking through so you don't mess up their pattern too much or disturb their natural movement so i almost would have like stuck it up against those briars back in there where there's no trails cutting through it that way it's not such a disturbance but um good location just not a good location for the blind to be sitting right there and then there is water right here if you guys were wondering is there water on the property yes there is tons of tons of minnows in this creek 
obviously nothing too big not in this section of it it's too shallow but tons of minnows in the creek water flows all the way through the one side of the property all the way to the other straight through the middle of the woods which is pretty nice which is pretty nice it's good to have that especially if you are looking for a good rut stand location being close to flowing water is awesome and the way that this property setup is beautiful it's connected to a long more narrow strip of timber in the creek flows right through it so it's a it's just a great setup to catch a buck that's cruising he's got water it's in a long narrow strip so it kind of funnels them down to where it's a little it's going to be a little bit easier to pinpoint the the natural movement and the flow of movement especially in the rut when the bucks are cruising looking for a doe it's just, it's going to be great because it's not just like a gigantic block of timber that you have to try to find the right pinch point that they naturally take and sometimes those pinch points aren't very obvious sometimes you have to really look for them and figure them out and in this location it's not going to be that complicated to figure out because the overall like block of timber it's a little bit of a bigger block right here where i'm at but the property line goes to a spot where it kind of bottlenecks down on both ends and so if you hunt either one of those bottleneck ends i mean if a buck's cutting through here and he's coming in one side and trying to go out the other if he's wanting to stick to the cover it makes it a pretty easy way to pinpoint where they're going to come and go from as long as you're hunting the wind right you'll be good again all these giant trees growing down all the way down to the ground And here's another section of that creek where it comes down through here. As you can see, plenty of, plenty of tracks, plenty of tracks. And I would show you more of the woods, but it, they all look the same. I mean, it's all the same exact type of thing. All these same exact style of trees, all the briars and all the bushes. I mean, it's just, it's a very brushy, brushy, uh, set of woods but for me as a deer hunter and a wildlife person and I like having property that holds wildlife especially in the deer season this is exactly what I was looking for and it is just it's gonna be perfect from here I don't know if you can see that opening way back there that's the opening to that main food plot that I was discussing for a little while with all the trees and stuff growing in it and it goes all the way to this fence row here and the fence row is the property line to this far side again it's only like 150 yards wide and it's just a very deep piece and then over from here if you come on over you can see there's this other trail that I was telling you makes a full loop around this overgrown field and then it just goes right on back to the shop that ridge over there that's all green between those two sets of pines is that location that's nice and level up on top of that ridge and it would actually make a great spot for like a bean field or something if you're going to use it for deer hunting from the house or from the barn let me know in the comments should we do that so that friends is a full property tour for the most part i didn't show you out in front of the house i'd like to keep us with a little bit of privacy i know we're a lot further out and farther away from civilization than we used to be um, but I'm sure there's people that would recognize it some with no bad intentions at all and then there's some bad apple out there that would just love to stir up problems and you know whatever if they find out where we live but anyways guys thank you so much for watching the next couple of videos I'm not exactly sure what I have in what order they're gonna be but we are gonna be getting started here on the shop. I'm trying to get somebody out here to do concrete work. It is hard to get a hold of people. I just didn't wanna do anything on the inside, like in terms of whether we do OSB and paint it white or do white steel. I just didn't wanna do that. And then like they end up having to pour the concrete and then the OSB or steel ends up being below the level that concrete ends up being at. And then for some reason, like if you ever had to remove a panel or something, it's like concreted into the ground partially. 
that would suck. So I'd rather not do that. I'd rather just wait till the concrete's done. That way all the measurements for the rest of it are according to where the level of concrete is down to the floor so that we do it right the first time. Super excited for the stuff we got coming up. Hopefully you guys are too. If you guys have not done so yet, you can get entered to win this 95 12 valve Cummins plus $5,000 cash. It's got compounds, thing is sick. If you want to enter to win it, there's literally only like two weeks left to enter and then that giveaway is gone. The highest entries you can get are 20 centuries with a mystery box purchase. If you don't want those 20 centuries, that's cool. 10 times entries for the entire store are live right now. So if you buy anything on the store, every $1 is gonna get you 10 entries towards winning, which means if you spend $10, you're gonna get 100 entries. I mean, it's it's amazing. So get in while you can if you wanna grab those 10x entries. This is the last couple moments of 10x. They do end on Friday. May 20th and then 10X is done and gone. 10X will not be back. So if you wanna grab those, do that while you can. Thanks so much guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.